the ambition there and, yeah. and you could uh <laughs> you could think about how to do that with the documents first mm -hmm. right rather than absolutely assessment, oh. right put put the you know the experience into here's how you set up here's a plan uh here's a place you can go get containers cheap um or how to how to get a cheap container to build your system out here's how you set the foundation here's how we walk through permits um here's the state county city permit that you're going to have to look into here's your insurance plan you know it's so uh, the documents in a box would probably be a cheap and be um as useful if not more useful because you're going to tailor it to every unique location anyway have, have you have you done much of that boys 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 calm down oh yeah so i mean that, that's also what amanda's <laughs> working on now and just just to, just to, just to, just to mention so um the share starter site which has some initial sample like at this point you know 10 12 year old documents we did we did put those out we were like the first organization to really start to share those and share those documents so i i get you um there is a, a lot lot as you know and as amanda's amanda's really pushing this with josh and speaking of shipping containers i see chris diplock with his yeah, hand chris, he's done yeah, chris has got a question here <laughs> or a topic yeah, no, chris, chris, chris has a lot even more knowledge than i do on shipping containers oh yeah well gene knows I'm, i've i've been chatting with gene for the better part of 12 years so i was one of the co-founders of vancouver tool library here in british columbia and then um in 2017 started a basically built um what we've been talking about which is a kind of community focus so it serves each neighborhood shipping container it's a self-service uh common lending library that runs off solar panels um and uh you you know we for the most part we use the my turn system kind of had a just we had to kind of link that into some other solutions just because it wasn't didn't fulfill everything we needed but a lot of the inventory and membership management remained with my turn. Um, and yeah, so I'm happy to answer questions about that. Like we did that, I did that through the, like through the right process. So everything was permitted. Um, Our building is built out of two recycled shipping containers. That's why I, I rue the idea of really using shipping containers, having my office be in one and having things having melt and Let's see what else freeze and things. But I know what you guys are getting at. There's, you know, we didn't build up to an RS code. We've got the outbuilding, you know, idea. Chris, I can't believe we haven't talked before, but, you know, uh, I don't know if we had had a chance to cross paths. Um, so much that happened with just, you know, learning about that process uh, with permitting and things. There's levels of like exportability. Um, what I get from that too is like my immediate reaction is, you know, imposing the will of others onto onto people that don't have a choice. So uh, somebody put a note about security, and that's a great question. Uh, metal boxes are great for not being as conducive. Being in logistics, I had some little tricks up my sleeve of how to secure those uh, shipping containers after they were built. However, our lovely designs cut giant holes into them. Uh, so we could have windows and doors and things. So our building is actually two shipping containers connected by a 15 foot deck. So it's not portable I, exactly. Um, we have another 40 foot container because we outgrew that before we were even to open, I think. And, you know, the idea of like running off of, of solar panels is definitely viable. We ended up getting hard wired into our location. Uh, but, you know, the the backups to those things are, are also big variables. So Chris, are you in, Va oh, okay. I was gonna, sorry. <laughs> are you uh, in Vancouver then with that? Is it mobile or do you have other issues? No, it's not other? mobile. No, it's not mobile, but for example, like one year, you know, they wanted to put the hydro lines underground. So mm -hmm. we had to move it and we just kind of negotiated a new spot, updated the license agreement. And it was back up and running three hours later. So it's, it is more flexible in terms of where you can kind of relocate and what you can do. And mm -hmm. I think that like, you know, this conversation of lending libraries and, and community resilience, emergency preparedness has been going on for a long time. And I think there's been a lot of groups that have seen 
kind of that potential. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a part of why you would want to invest in something like a shipping container with a renewable energy system on it, um, a lot of it has to do with its application for emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea of having something packaged, it's, it's super interesting. I think though, for a lot of communities, like I, 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 I talk to a lot of people that are like, oh, we want to do this here. You know, we happen to do it through the streets. Um, in some communities, it might work better through the parks department. And in some communities, it might work better through the school board. And so you're not going to get something that you can always just drop down in the same region. And for that, I think there's, there's so much... Um, redundancy, I think, in in kind of trying to find space when we know that community centers and, and public libraries and other government agencies actually have a lot of space available. So I actually, one of my current working ideas is a shed system. So a little less secure, but just setting up sheds because most of those you avoid permitting, you avoid a lot of that. And you could have sheds that are dedicated to things you could construct them in ways that they'd be a little more secure back to back and stuff too so um and then i saw somebody else put a uh, mobile library i love that idea uh because you know there's so many different variables to need i think there again the question of security it comes back up and the you know you could play devil's advocate to death with security um was that Jenny put in the mobile library? Did you have anything else you wanted to, any other thoughts on that? Uh, no, uh, well, yeah, I guess. When <laughs> first we were trying to find a spot, we were just having a lot of trouble finding a location. So we really played a lot around a lot with, could we find a few places where we could park the library? But the really appealing thing about it, even though, it would be a smaller inventory is that we would be able to move around the community so that you know on a certain day you knew that the mobile library was in your neighborhood or your part of the neighborhood um and make it a little easier to reach everyone yeah that's a great point uh y'all need a boat one yeah yeah there. <laughs> yeah that's exactly <laughs> what i was thinking is uh Use the water to your advantage back like in the 1800s. Yeah, yes. you got the sloop yeah, right let, there. Let, 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 let me just jump in on mobile and pick up locations. Um, we do have, we have customers doing that. Um, Edinburgh Tool Library did a big trial of that. They basically partnered with community centers as pickup locations. Um, some lessons learned there. We have other customers that sort of like... Um, what Chris is doing with the thingery, getting them out into the community, whether it is a mobile or just having a particular day or time where you can do pickups. Um, so we kind of fully support that. Um, for my turn side with having you know, pickup locations and things like that and integrate with electronic locks and lockers, so locker system, um, one of our partners just integrated. So if you also to sort of get, how do you get out into communities more? Um, and that that is really important because often, you know, even if you can't get a permanent space, having, you know, just a pick up and drop off day, it's not as convenient as being there all the time, but it can also at least introduce the idea into other communies. So, and Being there uh, all, with, all the time is not convenient either <laughs> for most people. Well, so for, the, for staff, yeah. yeah. Um, and one, one of the things we found successful with the West Seattle Tool Library is we would um, part, we had a, we had a mobile tool library um, we'd basically park it at the farmer's market, this sort of built-in, like-minded folks uh, that ended up, it got us memberships, and then um, these days could do, like, pick up and drop off at those types of other community folks. I want to... Um, Craig has had, Craig's had his hand up for yeah, a long time, so I'm going to be quiet. I wanted to plant just a, a quick seed, too, talking about the difference. We've talked about rural environments, but thinking of even just the you know, differences in the urban environments, I mean just talking to Ballard and Vancouver and different places too. How equitably can we serve these communities? I'm asking you guys, but let's, Craig, what's your question? It was actually really quick. Um, it just occurred to me that 
uh, and I'm sure you guys have already delved into this, but uh, churches are looking for ways to stay relevant and serve communities. And often I would I would wonder, in, in particularly things like the Latter-day Saints, who have a, a real commitment to things like community resilience uh, and disaster preparedness. I wonder if how often uh, those those might that's, make host sites for to a library. That's, that's such a libraries. great point, Craig. That is such a great point. I mean, in in the care network for the um, for the Vashon care network that Liz is basically the president of, uh, literally has two sheds in its backyard. That is what they use. They use the parking yeah. lot. They use the services. Yeah, she mentioned most, that most yesterday. Of the time they go unused. He had a photo and it was uh, of, of a location and I thought it was on a church property. I wasn't sure. For yeah, the... that's, a, that's a brilliant uh, point though, that, that a lot of these, a lot of these yeah. properties do have the ability yeah. to house these, these uh, spaces. I have two points that I just want to make real quick for that. One is um, the Masons are actually the host for ours. So again, just another, you know, community uh, fast, fast, like, you know, foundation things that are all over the place and becoming semi you know outdated and, and not maybe fully utilized um they, they, they've had challenges of course with that still uh but also the my bigger issue with churches than using those places are sort of institutional and what that might pose as a prohibit you know someone not being willing to use it because maybe they have a different affiliation or different use we have a ton of churches in Federal Way, Craig. Right? You know that like there's a bunch of churches out here, and it's great when they do a lot of service, but some of them uh, don't have the capacity either. Um, but I love that idea. Yeah. I mean, it's got to take those initiatives and people that are are able to connect with. Yeah, them. I've I've worked with um, a couple churches in Federal Way and Des Moines area. Um, one on a, um, a rotating homeless shelter support. Um, where they would open up their church halls for shelter on a rotating basis across a suite of seven churches so they could do it for a full week. Um, and then the community supper ideas have also um, been hosted by a number of different churches where they'll uh, yeah. rotate those through um, and, and, and the volunteers from each church provide one day a week again or one meal a week. Do you know Hope Elder? Do you know who that is? I know the name. Yeah. I have to work directly with Hope, but yes. It's, it's so, so yeah, that was that was where it came out of. Is I I've worked in that I've come into a lot of the volunteer stuff from that space. But absolutely, I know there's other things we want to talk about. I'm just curious if we explored that. Well, yeah, I mean, I think even West Seattle, the Youngstown building wasn't uh, uh, it was the second location or so. So uh, yeah, Northeast was on church property for a while, and Finney Ridge is built into some of their larger programs as well, which is a homeowners association. Um, yeah, and the religious organizations, you know, can have pros and cons, but it takes us getting creative to, to find that. I really, um, you know, want to, if anyone wants to share, like, what big challenges they've they face too because that was something that we were hoping to glean from sort of the other session and didn't get a ton of feedback but um are you facing what have you faced with like your, your tool library or lending programs or repair programs for that matter nothing no issues we're good um alex i chainsaws I can't believe we haven't talked about chainsaws today or yesterday. <laughs> there's not there's not a week that passes by that we don't talk about chainsaws. I know that's why we, I'm surprised. Uh, there, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm coordinating with a new uh, maintenance coordinator, and we were just literally talking about okay, so how do we divide and conquer here, getting ready for the fall? And we we've not had the the push for the chainsaws. But we do. Our, well, everybody has them in on Vashon now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, hopefully not, but uh, some people should not have chainsaws, but uh, but uh, the, one, one of the topics that we did talk about, and, and Steve, Mr. Bergman, hopefully he's listening in from uh, Makerspace, um, we we're talking about doing a safety class again, and we've not done that in a couple of years, so. Um, yeah, I got some people to send to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we need to put together some instructors. We also had one of our members do a, um, a maintenance class for us this last 
a couple of months ago. That was super helpful. So uh, it allows uh, just a pool of people who have the ability to sharpen those chains, which is such a difference, as you know. It's uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, we were considering, you know, what if we gave folks the implements to sharpen their chainsaws while they're checking them out, but we don't want to encourage mis, you know, misuse of it, too. But yeah. then again, you know, as we get the wear and tear on these things, it gets real. So uh, Ket is, is in here, and they're our program manager. Dutifully, every chainsaw gets sharpened right before it goes out. Um, there was something that came into my head, and then it immediately left. But I'll, 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 I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, oh no, I was going to just toss out on chainsaws. Um, you guys pr probably want to, if you haven't already, add a maintenance plan on, on every check in to have chainsaws go into maintenance as soon as they're checked in, and they cannot be checked back out. And okay, I see yeah. heads shaking. So new, new feature you can enable it and basically have a chainsaw check, you know, check chain with instructions every time that the chainsaws come back in. And I would definitely take them out of being able to be checked out again until that maintenance is complete, just to make sure it's always done from a liability point of view. Thank well, you so much for doing that, Gene. Yeah. We appreciate that. That's that's a great feature. Oh. Yeah. So. That actually brings up what I, I was going to think of, which is, you know, the terminality of these things. I don't know if you guys have encountered the battery powered chainsaw. <laughs> um, but and, that, and that's and that's part of the challenge, right? Because yeah. the life cycle for the charge, especially even just a 60 volt lithium battery, which is really more expensive than the actual tool. Oh, absolutely. So um, how do we how do we balance as tool libraries this idea that we are fostering waste reduction and we're you know we're wearing well, down on things? I, obviously, we're, we're maintaining them. We're, we're trying to prevent misuse of them. We're trying to keep them in circula circulation as possible. Well, so go ahead. Throw, throw out a topic here. So there's a place in Pennsylvania that actually re refurbishes batteries. Uh, so uh, there are some places around the country but they're far and few between. I've not been able to find anything in the West Coast. I certainly don't want to put a burden on the postal system by sending out, you know, a hundred pounds worth of batteries, which in itself is just going to create issues. And it's, you know, with the post office, but also- Having had my, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Trying to ship those, um, uh, have that's my IATA certification coming out here please don't do that no that's not anything we need to bring down plates for um, well you know I mean it can I, be I, done I, I think... as long as it's properly packed but it's not something if if it's something that we can actually do locally that would be ideal so with with IRA there is a lot of money for that basically um, EVs electrification there's a lot of plans for new battery recycling. So I think that is going to come on board in a big way um, because every, like electric, it's basically electrifying everything. Um, mm -hmm. And we've seen it with, you know, power tools. It's, it's going to create a waste issue, but there will, there is infrastructure already being worked on a lot more of it. It is few and far between to find it right now. And there are going to be issues with, all the different battery types, the different battery chemistries, um, both what's used in EVs and what versus what's used in tools. But I think that problem will, you know, that that's being there. There's there's money to be made, especially um, for any of the battery chemistries that are using, you know, the rare earths, um, cobalt, and even even just lithium. Getting, you know, so I, you know, not that it's not an issue now, but I think that issue is going to be easier to deal with um, it's as a classic, time goes on and that's going to accelerate next year. It's a classic worse before better scenario where right. the transition have higher waste, yeah. but right. that's while you're transitioning to lower carbon emission fuel sources, it's just inevitable. Well, and well it's and it's then you get efficiencies later um, in the supply chain for, for battery refurbishment. Yeah. And we're in the worst part. Yeah. The, the laws around them having to change really like that's you know, the emission standards and things like that coming into effect without having carbon offsets and carbon sales be as as maybe um 
I don't know, retributive as, as they are in things and, and causing that actual need for change. You know, microchip shortages didn't uh, really create a, a new innovation in microchips. It just created a vacuum of what we thought we needed to have and uh, price increases, right? Um, but if we can use that and learn from it, this is where we were getting yesterday with the you know, creative engineering and manufacturing level of things. Um, you know, we cause the need and cause the changes by having that be prevalent and having the conversations that we can. Um, that said, anybody doing some crazy stuff like partnering with tool manufacturers or buddies on that level? Anybody want to speak I've, to that? I've, I've made some attempts with a couple of manufacturers um, with DeWalt. Um, EGO was really tough to reach out to. Uh, they're a very closed type company and we have a, a number of EGO type tools. Uh, DeWalt seems to have a, a, a little bit more opening in their door for the nonprofits and for that topic. Um, EGO would be a great one if somebody knows of a, a resource that's available there. Uh, that would be absolutely awesome for our group to be able to find some sort of friendly opening to EGO. Um, and those batteries are super expensive. So Steel just came out with the battery system too, which I think is yeah. based on EGO's similar. And yeah, then... the, yeah, and the problem is kind of when you kind of like the way that you purchase a car, right? Sometimes they'll, if you own an all wheel drive car, you have to get all four tires, the same same brand and same mileage and so on. Or at least that's what they tell me. Um, but with when you begin to acquire a number of these tools in your library and you kind of follow the same brand, there's a risk to that. Um, oh, absolutely. As, and, as, well, and you, as well as a benefit, obviously. Yeah, you get to you get the annoying factor of, oh, great, you changed your battery design. Sweet. Now nothing works. Way to go, guys. Um, but I've heard, so I sat on the board for the uh, Compton Maker Hub that they're starting down there in California. And they had a relationship, I think, with Black & Decker and got a whole slew of tools, spanking new. Uh, Stanley, I've also heard, has been able to do that um, or offered that to different community members. So there's potential for collaboration, but... Chicago Maybe. Public Library received a, a, a pretty massive grant yeah. from, the, from um, Stanley slash DeWalt. Um, yeah. And they it's posted the a lot online. Stan, yeah. Stanley, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Stan, Stanley Black and Decker owns DeWalt and like half the tool brands. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That's how, yeah, that's how I found out. I didn't realize that. They just that. each yeah. have their own application processes for their different community outreach effort kind of things. They do. They're, 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 they're actually a customer of ours at Micro. They run a tool library themselves. Um, I, I, since this is being recorded, I, I won't say a whole, whole lot. <laughs> but if, if, you know, if you are interested, re reach out and I, I should see uh, what my contacts can potentially do. And I know Bosch also, off, like they'll also offer like a, not for free, but discounts on their refurbished tools. Mm -hmm. um, I can check and see if my contacts there are still active. Um, so just, uh, you know, I use it's still a purchase, well, think, but if there's something you really need. I think yeah. that those, that's where we can go with some of this replicable to library to box, yeah. because you're talking about, again, more of that implementation and test markets. I was going to ask a general question to get more conversation going. If you guys have more to say here, go for it. We have- Kita, by the way, as a brand for power tool, battery power tool. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have one of the broadest uh, portfolios of tools that run off batteries with a common interface on their battery packs for the most part. And it's nice. We have quite a few Greenworks tools. I wonder if they would have some. Greenworks is a subsidiary of what, Ryobi, I think, or other similar ones. So fun fact, manufacturers that create things, then they sell cheaper versions of that to some of your big box retailers. And Greenworks is the version that goes to Home Depot, I think, or Lowe's, or I think it's Lowe's. Um, 
that is yeah. a version of that. And it just, they, they work for a while. Mm -hmm. We had Tillers, I think, or Tillers, like, yeah. cool, one season. What other, like, collaborative efforts have you guys found real good successes with, like, you're just stoked about? I wish Tacoma was here. I don't know if anybody Hayes is here. Rebuilding down there in Tacoma has been a great partner, I think, for them. Steve, what you got? So we and Vashon collaborate a lot between Zero Waste Vashon and Vashon Makerspace. And um, we, we both do the Fix-It Cafe together. The, our, our Vashon Makerspace organization actually has the tool library and a, a new makerspace that just started. We just uh, built it and we're now teaching classes. We have about a, what, 500 square foot little area inside of a big warehouse that <clears throat> is a great shop for uh, teaching classes. Mm. And so we hope to, we're, we're sort of a, a tiny version of the barn <laughs> oh Which, yeah in uh, on Bainbridge Island the Bainbridge yeah. Artisan Resource Network that we just lusted after after visiting that um with their 25,000 square feet of makerspace <laughs> dreams goals all right we have six seconds left thank you guys um thanks Amanda good another framed up good to see you guys thank, and thank, thank you all for everything you do yeah thank, thank you, you Jean. yeah yeah thank you Jean. We'll be teleported back shortly. Oh, wait, we have to leave. Right, Less mysterious. Jenny, it's good to see you. I have to get in touch with oh. you. I think we had been emailing a while ago and lost track of stuff, but I think I have your email still, or I'll get it from this. Okay. All right, off we go. Okay. beginner level trying to fix things 